what I see in this IMCAS Congress uh, 2020 is that there are a lot of sessions out there, a lot of machines about body contouring. And I think the more machines coming out, the more complicated it gets, and we hear a lot about uh, combination therapies. But um, before we, we, we decide to buy a machine, to use a machine, to follow a protocol, I think it's very important to think which patient you're going to treat in which condition. And so the assessment process of uh, body contouring patients is as difficult as with face. After me, um, Gina Messina will talk a little bit about uh, the new advances in cryolipolysis. I think Delio is the only company on the market who just bringing out the second generation of cryolipolysis. All the other companies uh, still have the, the, the first generation machine. I think this will be a very interesting talk. And then I'm going to finish uh, this symposium um, talking about um, another technology to treat uh, a certain type of satellite and then with a Q&A session. So why is body contouring or, or body treatment so uh, important for us or so interesting? Because the growth rates that we see international-wise with body contouring, with non-surgical body contouring um, procedures is really uh, massive. Um, uh, when you look to the landscape of all uh, energy-based devices working on uh, body treatments, for sure cryolipolysis is still number one, but I think there are a lot of new technologies coming out and we will see massive growth rates um, to, uh, in the future. That's also the reason why DeLeo, which is celebrating the 10th anniversary this year, is just expanding over the globe. You, you can see that um, they are currently present in more than 35 countries and there's yet a lot more to come, United States, Russia, Australia, I think, was just completed um, right now. So the company is working hard on expanding. They are working hard on, on bringing new products um, out there. And we're now, today, we have the chance to talk a little bit about. You just wonder probably why I'm going to show you a face patient when we talk about a body contouring session. Um, I think we the same thing that we had some years ago when we started treating faces the same problem we face nowadays when we st when we start treating bodies if you look to that patient and this patient is coming to your office i'm sure you already know that this patient can probably not be treated with a face lift only she cannot be treated with fillers only and probably she cannot be treated with lasers only so all of you know that if you want to have a pleasant result, you have to go for combination treatments and then you probably will have a result like that. And it will take some time and for sure it will take some money from the patient. But with body procedures nowadays, we still think I have cryolipolysis and whatever the patient has, I'm going to treat. And I think we really should change our mind when we assess body patients, when we, when we do consultations with body patients to set the right expectations and to, to use the right mix of procedures. So we have to analyze patients in a proper way. And I'm going to show you my way of how to analyze um, um, patients, nevertheless it's cellulite, whatever, but all body contouring, contouring procedures. So what do you see in this patient? What is the patient's desire? This is also something which is very important. Just remember face patients. Face patient is coming to your office and talking about the nasal level fold and you see a totally deflated temple and mid face, but the patient is just seeking for a nasal level fold treatment still. So I think we have to combine what we see, the patient's wish and the techniques that uh, are offered to you. And sometimes the result of the consultation or the, or the end of the cons consultation could also be that you're not able to treat her in a proper way and that we have to send her away. And I think to, to be honest to yourself and to the patient makes you successful in the end. So we need to think about who we are going to treat and we need to think how we're going to treat these patients. And if we do that, we can achieve body contouring procedures and having results like that without doing surgery. And the reason why is not only the machine, but the proper indication and the proper combination with the protocol. And I want to go even further. We're now talking about algorithms, but I think we have to adapt these algorithms to the severity of the problem that we see. So nobody in the, in the world will ask you, if you how much uh, fillers do you use usually with mid-phase? It depends. It depends on the severity, on the aging process and everything else. So same thing with body contouring procedures. I call it the concept of free. I think 
that there's nothing more than structure, laxity, and volume, which can be a problem in body contouring or patients. So what I mean with that is like, you can have some kind of laxity, not of the skin, of the whole tissue envelope. You can have a problem with volume. This could either be too much volume, not enough volume, or a history of a lot of volume change, which is very hard to treat, and I think that if you have patients with that, you really sometimes have to exclude these patients from your, from your portfolio, from your treatments. And you have structural, what I call it structural cellulite, so there are really some, the superficial uh, fascia system is just making a problem. So let me explain it a little bit uh, more detail, the concept of free. So in the end, when we age and during time, we have something like weakening of the roof. I call it roof because it's not skin. Skin is just a superficial layer that shows us the whole problem going down until to the bone, including muscle, including the whole fat tissue, including the whole superficial fascia system. So that's the reason why I'm going to call it the roof. The weakening of the roof is causing laxity of the whole tissue, losing and gaining volume. We know with high frame technology right now that muscle, that if we can address the muscle, we can change a lot of things in body contouring. And the reason why is because we change volume. So you can reduce volume with cryolipolysis, you can gain volume, for example, with high frame uh, technology. So this, this is volume. And I'm very much uh, dedicated and I just uh, presented a prospective trial that uh, we did with, um, with uh, 60 patients. I'm very much like talking about the fiber septal, the fiber septal network, and the structural cellulite problem that we have. So let's look to this animation. Then what the animation is going to show you on the right side, it's the, the change, the morphing of a butt. And what you see is that the severity is going to be more and more. And the graph is going to show what, what happens. So if you have an excess volume, if you have, um, if the patient is gaining weight, it's going to stretch the bands and you will in the end have some kind of skin irregularities. But pretty much the same thing happens if the roof is going to be diminished, if the, the whole fascia system is going to grow older, and if you lose weight. The appearance on a 2D photo could probably be just the same. But it's a totally different thing if you could treat the patient yes or no. And nevertheless, what kind of device you use out there, um, if you treat the patient with a lot uh, with a long BMI history change, you will run into a problem or probably not reach your expectations. So let's look to this lady. It's not about which device I'm going to use. It's about still about to assess what I'm going to see. So in her case, what I do, when you want to, to look for structural cellulite, which in my eyes is not, a, a, there's only one technique to treat structural cellulite, and that's subcision. Either you use a device of a company, which is uh, tissue guided, or you do it by hand, but if you have structural cellulite, you need to cut these bands. And to assess in a proper way these bands, just squeeze the dimple from right to left. If the dimple goes away, it's not structural cellulite, it's due to laxity. If it stays or gets even worse, it's structural cellulite. So that's what I'm going to do. You see, when I lift the butt upwards, the dimple disappears. When I squeeze it from right to left, it still stays there and gets, gets even worse. So that's the way how you define structural cellulite. But we also have to define laxity and volume. And um, last year we published scales on, on, on cellulite. So we published some scales on dimpling. So we counted the dimple in a certain area. We said the more severe, the cellulite is. And the reason why you need scales like that is because you have to have an objective assessment after you've been treating. Or even more, if the patient is coming to my office and she's uh, showing me a grade three in dimpling, I will never promise her to be a grade zero. So I think it's to, to manage um, patient expectations in a proper way, you need to use the scales. That's the reason why we publish the scales for structure as well as for skin laxity, because um, both are very important, and you, you can see obviously that a grade four patient will be hard to will be of course going to be hard to treat. Nevertheless, which kind of te technology you use, the more severe the case is, the more you have to think about combination. The more expensive it's going to be. So what you need to explain to your patient usually, you can only use products or devices. So the more severe it is, the more product you're going to use. The more severe it is and you use a device, the more energy and the more sessions you have to do. So if somebody asks me, what is your protocol on structural cellulite with this or that? I cannot say because it depends on the severity of the case. Same thing with fillers. 
So why why don't we think the same way like we assess phase and how we do it in body treatments? That's very important. Something which in my thought is very, very underestimated in all aesthetic medicine right now is the matter of volume. I think every aesthetic treatment or every patient is during the aging process or somehow affected by volume. And I think it's both, it's the BMI that we have today and it's the BMI history. I'm going to show you two examples. If you look to that lady and we're thinking about, are we going to use technology X or technology A or technology B? The thing that we have to know, the thing that we have to explain this patient is that she's totally deflated. So, I'm just wrong, I'm sorry, I'm back. So she's totally deflated. That means her BMI is rather low, her today BMI. I, I'm not quite sure what her BMI history was, but for sure she's just deflated. So I need something to fill her butt up, but I won't be able to treat it actually only. If you look to the patient on the lower, lower bottom down there, if I would show you just a 2D photo, you would probably not be able to assess it in a proper way. That's the reason why I think videos are uh, very important. And, and nowadays I ask patients to send me videos via messenger systems and I can do proper um, assessments even without seeing them. And what we found out in the study that we also published is if you have a BMI gap from minimum, from minimum to maximum more than eight, it starts getting complicated. Just think about a balloon. Take a red balloon and just blow it up to maximum and just deflate it. Look at the balloon as it looks in the beginning and right now. So the, 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 the bigger the history is, the more problem you will have in the end to treat any, uh, the patient. And it's the same with the face, the same with the breast, the same with the belly. I think this concept could be addressed in the whole aesthetic medicine. <laughs> So let's look to an example of patients because that's the way how we assess. So if I look to the patient, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of structural problems. So the deep dimpling that you see both in the thighs and both on the, on the, as well as in the buttock is a structural. I don't think that this patient has a lot of laxity, but for sure there's some volume changes. I know it because I, I, I talked to her. So the, 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 the following procedure for me would be that I would more focus on a, on a treatment which, call, which treats the structural satellite more than laxity issues. So these proper assessment just helps you to get, have results like that. So you had some cryolipolysis in the inner thighs. We did some tissue guided uh, subcision on, on, on the butt and adding some skin laxity treatments and then you can have with some kind of minimal invasive treatment you can really have uh, amazing results. It takes time and it also costs some money if you start combining, you have to tell your patients. Next patient, just having in mind what I told you, structure, laxity, volume. It's for sure a 100% volume patient. And uh, to treat this patient is very easy. Do we have to combine something, RF with cryolipolysis? No, you just can go for cryolipolysis and you will for sure have a, a happy patient because you did the proper assessment. Another thing, difficult patient, because this patient has a little bit of overexpansion. So she's a little bit, I wouldn't call it obese, but what we see, the type of cellulite that we see with her, I call it rippling. So you have a lot of dimpling. This is due to the reason that you have an overexpansion of the tissue envelope, and all these small bands are holding down. So these patients are very hard to treat. But if you are able to strengthen the roof, I wouldn't call it to treat the laxity because this is not really lax. But if you're able to strengthen the roof, you will have a better result. Another patient I'm going to show, it's a diamond patient for later on. A lot of laxity issues, also some volume uh, changes for sure. If you ask her, she was pregnant for sure, or something like that. So can, can I, if the patient's coming to your office, can you treat my belly? Yes, I can treat it. I'm probably going to make it from laxity grade four to laxity grade three, but nothing more because there are a lot of things going on and I'm not a magician. So the take home message for the first part for me is like, there shouldn't be any treatment without assessment. If you just do cryolipolysis, and I was just talking to the guys from the video yesterday, because they're also traveling around with a lot of doctors, and some, sometimes doctors say the machine doesn't work, the patient wasn't happy. Probably, and it's not probably 100% for sure it was the wrong assessment, or you have been choosing the wrong patient. Just in terms of money, in terms of you don't know who you treat, but for sure it was the wrong patient. So no treatment without proper assessment. Always think about combination. I know it's hard because it's a lot of money. You end up with um, <coughs> surgery body treatments with five to 6,000 euros. Probably it's hard because you think it's hard, but we have patients out there spending thousands of euros just for the moisture creams per year. 
So um, if you think about combinations, yes, it gets more expensive, but if you do it the proper way, you will have uh, very happy patients. And the and treatment algorithm is essential, and I would go one step further, and I think that's what we will see in the future. We will present treatment algorithms customized to the grade of severity, not only the treatment algorithms, but I think the first step is treatment algorithms, and as we get in the future to come, and I'm about on the end of my first talk, and I uh, would like to invite Gina to the podium. So thank you for your attention.